Thank you so much. Um, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Um, let us uh, put our palms together to invite Gishila to turn the wheel of Dharma in accordance to the well wishes and capacities of students. Gishila, please. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So before we start the, the actual class from the, the true kinds of negation, so I need to explain a little bit before the actual class. First, we need to know the importance of studying into into middle way. Very simple explanation. We all look like totally ignorant being or ignorance, ignorant person to know the actual the reality of all phenomena. Whether you are Buddhist or non-Buddhist, male or female, or whether you are human or non-human being, we all are totally very ignorant person to know the truth, know the actual the status of the phenomena. Therefore, when our five you know, the sense, sensations, particularly our the sixth, the sixth mind engage into any object that there's always the misperception, the misunderstanding uh, of the object. It is look like we all wear the you know, sunglass, which is the color is yellow. With the yellow sunglass, sunglasses, so when we look in our room, all the object appear yellowish glass. Everything is yellow. The green, like an object, appear to yellow. The white color phenomena, the phenomena which is in white color also appear to yellow. So we be, then we tend to believe everything is in, in, the, in the yellow color. Likewise, so we have the ignorance, not knowing the truth for, you know, eons of eons of years. Therefore, therefore for us, whatever phenomena appear to us, what kind of you know, act, uh, activity we engage in, everything is look like, you know, uh, kind of independent. Everything is look like uh, there without imputation. Therefore, we have attachment, hatred, anger, so and so. This is the, the you know, the, the ignorance is the, like a foundation to have all the misperception. Second, due to the ignorance, then all kinds of negative thoughts arise. Attachment arise, the, for the attachment, the object is very beautiful object. Also, we also believe what the attachment, you know, perceive things to the attachment. Also, we also believe what the object appear to the anger. Also, we never think or oh, there's the anger, for the anger, everything is very ugly. In the reality, things cannot be that ugly. For the attachment, all the phenomena appear to very beautiful, very attractive, very nice thing. Also, we never think the things around us, the person around us cannot be that, you know, 
beautiful, cannot be that attractive. We never think. Therefore, we have all the, you know, negative thoughts for years of years of years of years. So when we have a misperception uh, on the phenomena, misunderstanding of the reality, there is a nature. So we always have a, you know, a lot of mis uh, kind of perception. Then we got all the negative thoughts. Then we just follow, we for eons of eons of years, we follow the thoughts, the minds. All the minds follow after the, you know, all the negative thoughts. All the negative thoughts follow after the ignorance. Therefore, eons of eons here, we are, you know, lead by ignorance. Ignorance lead all the negative thoughts, all the negative thoughts lead the minds, the minds lead the person. Therefore, we need to cut the ignorance, then no more negative thoughts, then no more, you know, the polluted, the polluted mind, no, no, no more minds, we can polluted our minds, then the person always can follow with the right thoughts, not the wrong thoughts. Therefore, ignorance is the, you know, the, the man kind of like a king of the origin of suffering, origin of the negative actions. Then when the Buddhist scholar, you know, philosopher, including Buddha Shakyamuni, when they analyze how the things exist, how the things really there. Then the first two school, Vipashika and Sutantika school believe everything's there as perceived to us. There's no all phenomena around us exist essentially independently. Then when it's come to point of view from Chittamandra proponent who mainly follow the Chittamandra school, for them, the phenomena can be two possibility. One exists externally, or second, everything is mainly the mental projections. Therefore, the Chittamandra proponent believe all phenomena are on us is merely the mental projection. Particularly, you know, the, the eighth, you know, all or projection of all basis mind. Nothing can be exist ex essentially, sorry, externally. Then when it's come to the point of view from the Madhyamaka, then there's a two different view on how phenomena exist. First, the, the uh, Swatan, Swatantika school, you know, you, in English they call autonomous school. For them, the phenomena exists. I, me, you, we all exist with the two conditions. One, half, you know, come from the object side, half from object side, half from the subject side. Then we can name, this is a cup. This is a human being, not a cup. This is a human being, not an animal. Those are the animal, not human being. So according to the Sotantika proponent, things you know, exist from, you know, from with the two condition, half from the object side, half from the subject side, then we can say this is so-and-so. <clears throat> then the Pasangika, you know, among the uh, Buddhist philosophical school, the M Pasangika is the highest proponent. 
Also, we believe the view from Pasangika is the kind of finest state of the phenomena. Means all phenomena is totally 100% empty or inherent existent. For them, everything around us is no like illusion. None, none of the phenomena can be exist by their own sight, by their own modes. So we, you know, uh, what we call designate. This is cup, this is car, this is water, based on the certain condition. Therefore, here we all have to be we have to be very clear, must show before we naming, before we named a phenomena as a cup, before we name the phenomena is a simply container water, water container. The, the, the phenomena which is hold, holds the water, then we name a cup. So in order to name a cup, for example, we need something to name it. Therefore, there's something, the thing is cup or not, is mainly depends on our designation. It's very clear, for example, now for me this day, I am the you know, disciplinary you know, master. So when you look at me, you cannot see there's a difference between me in Singapore, me in, in Singapore, me and in Gyutu. But the monks who live in Gyutu, for them, I'm totally different. Based on Gashi and then they designated me as a disciplined master, like disciplinaries. But this is just name based on my feature, based on you know, my uh, me. There's nothing, there's, they cannot add any extra quality. So when, you, when I hand over my you know, power and position, they cannot minus a particular quality from my body, from my mind. They just change the name, the person always can be same. Therefore, according to Pasangika, when you do meditation on emptiness, what do you need to think? The things around me merely designated based on certain condition. None of the phenomena can be exist inherently, independently, and essentially. Therefore, everything is empty of so and so. Just in your mind, you just hold the empty of the inherent existence. Then the rest of the proponent, even though uh, the Sotantika, Chitta Mantra, Vipashika, you know, Sutan, Savatantika, all of them, for them, all phenomena are there. Not, there, not only there, they are there inherently. Absolutely. Right. Then from the Pasangika point of view, from like Chandrakirti, Naga, Master Nagajuna, so they say, if thing exists inherently, then they can be exist, you know, can be exist, can be established, can be arise from self. It's just arising by itself. Option number one. Or Maybe it is arising from other, other mean, you know, uh, inherently existent cause produce inherently existent result of fruits of fruition. Option number two. Option number three, if thing exists inherently, ultimately, then thing must be, you know, arise from both. Arising from in you know, arising safely, arising from other. 
or the, the last option can be arising from you know costless so this is therefore the, the you know reject or refute the four extinct how and why they need to refute if thing exists inherently ultimately essentially independently from the person bigger point of view all of the meaning is same the meaning is same essential existence inherently existent ultimately existent independently existent they are the meaning is same the trend is different so things exist you know if things exist inherently then must be arising from self arising from other arising from both or arising from consciousness so then they have to refute each of the you know extinct arising from one of the, from the four extinct so if you able to refute the four extinct on on the basis of one phenomena that means you able to understand the thing not arising from self that the particular thing is not arising from other the particular things is not arising from both and cause less mean it doesn't mean you realize emptiness the emptiness can be realized you know kind of indirectly when they refute when they negate the four extremes Ara not arising from self is not emptiness not arising from other is not the emptiness that emptiness can be realized after they refute you know, <clears throat> uh, negate the four extremes so this means you i hope you you understand the the important for realizing emptiness then what is the connection between you know the two types of negation and emptiness the best analogy i explain you based on your misunderstanding misperception somehow you believe there's a ghost there's a ghost there's a ghost in my room there's a ghost in my room somehow you believe you tend to believe there's a ghost and somebody say oh you don't worry there there's no ghost in your house you 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 cannot believe you're not going to believe what the people say therefore in order to free from the scary you know believe in ghosts in your house you need to search all parts of your house every corner as you enter the room switch on the light you know look around yeah i know there's no ghost there may be the ghost it may be you know stays in the cabinet or in the cabinet you need to search with all corners one by one one by one then finally you you going to believe there's no ghost simply <clears throat> you refute you negate you eliminate the ghost from the house just a no ghost no ghost it doesn't mean there's no ghost but there's a naga no in your mind you just negate eliminate the ghost that's it this example therefore so when we you know try to realize emptiness we need to negate the negation so what is the negation of emptiness the inherently existent independently existent the independent phenomena the ultimate phenomena the essential phenomena are the negation now we need to go more precisely based on one phenomena <clears throat> for example this is a cup Right, like a glass, like cup. We can name cup. 
what is the basis of arguing uh, argument you know between independently existent and empty of the independent existent so this cup is the basis so the true proponent pasangika and the swatan sutantika are arguing is the cup is exist independently or not exist independently that means the cup is the basis for arguing between the pasangika and sutan or swatantika like two schools the, the basic argument so when you analyze how the cup is exists finally you think yes the cup is not really exists independently the cup must be empty of independent existence mean your mind just just catch up you know your mind just catch up or holds catch catch or hold the empty of inherently existent cup not the cup the inherently the cup just empty of existent no ghost in my house when your mind just hold there's no ghost simply no ghost it doesn't mean in reality you think there's no ghost but, but there's some something else no just negate the negation which is ghost in your house so therefore it is very important to know the the definition or meaning of the you know two types of negation otherwise you you yourself we ourselves i myself i not go to understand do i realize emptiness or not am i in this you know realize it or not not so when you have a clear understanding of the two types of negation then you think yes i think probably i realize emptiness right now we repeat uh, again the same things page number 193 195 after the quotation as for the reasons why on the one except the thesis and proofs such as as this one does not became uh, sotan tika madhimaka i have explained this extensively elsewhere because in sanskrit they call you know uh, sotan tika and pasangika so we all are not good in sanskrit so when we hear the words you know sotantika uh, savatantika pasangika we don't have any kinds of feeling as a monk studying for many years in tibetan so when he be here the pasangika in tibetan thal yurwa thal yurwa then the sotantika in tibetan rang yutpa rangyutpa thanyurwa so when we hear when we recite the words thanyurwa and rangyutpa for us very clear you know very easy to understand between the these two you know sub school within the madhyamaka rangyutpa means you know they negate the negation through reasonings and logics which is you know the logics and reasoning must be inherently existent that means inherently existent logics and proofs and reasoning negate the negation this is the kind of definition of uh, sotantika then thaljurwa means still 
They also use logics and reasonings and you know, proof, but they don't accept inherently existing logics, reason, and proof that they can negate the negation. Okay? Therefore, how and so it will not elaborate further here. So Lama Songha was already explained between differences between the Pasangika, so Sotantika and uh, the Pasangika, the differences. Now how then are the two forms of negation defined? Yeah, that means how you define, how do you, how you going to establish the two kinds of, you know, two forms of negation. Then there's a, at the beginning, say, in general, in general, negation is cognized by the mind. The negate, you know, after establishing or negation or negate mainly through the mind. General negation is cognized by the mind on the basis of explicit elimination of the relevant object of negation. Say, relevant of the object of negation. So, once more. In general, the negation is cognized by the mind on the basis of explicit elimination of the relevant, is a relevant object of negation. So the determination of the something as not being that which is not itself, for example, was not being a known was is not in self, is a negation. Then what, what does mean negation? What is the negation of emptiness in order to realize the true form of uh, negation? We need to know the negation. Generally, generally negation in opposite. Opposite of the was is non was Opposite of the non was is the was. Opposite of the human being is non human. Opposite of the non human being is the human. That, that means was. When we realize was, we negate the non was. So when we when we saw in you know, a human, so we negate the non-human non being. This is you know, kind of a negation, but not the actually the relevant negation. So next one. So the determination of something is not being that which is not self. For example, a was not being a non-was is not in the is itself is a negation. On the other hand, we find terms like ultimate nature, ultimate truth. So when you hear the words ultimate truth, ultimate nature, the, the, the words, the term ultimate nature, ultimate truth, the term you cannot hear, they negate the negation. When you hear the, the term, the words, you know, uh, uh, ultimate nature and ultimate truth, you cannot hear the words negate the negation. But when the mind realizes ultimate truth, uh, ultimate nature and ultimate truth, when the minds, when the mind realize ultimate nature, ultimate truth, the mind had to negate the relevant negation. The words no need to negate the negation. This means, you know, all the, uh, uh, the non, all the, the negation, when they realize, the mind must be the mind, the mind must 
defeat the negation. The words, the term, no need to negate the negation. For example, ultimate truth, ultimate nature, or the, you know, then the kind of one type of negation, the term, the words, it doesn't, that it doesn't have any part, any, you know, simple words to say, to saying, you know, explicit the negation. Which do not explicitly negate any opposite on the linguistic, linguistic level. Mean the words, the, in the, the words never say in negate the, uh, do not explicitly, explicitly negate any opposition, opposite on the linguistic level. Yet, when their reference appear to the mind, the meaning, ultimate truth, you know, the, uh, the ultimate nature, when the mind, when the reference, uh, when they are reference appear to the meaning, they do so in the aspect of elimination, eliminating the conceptual elaboration. There was no need to negate the negation. When the mind realizes realize the ultimate truth, ultimate nature, the mind have to negate the neg negation, which is uh, ultimate, uh, so is essential existence, inherent existence, independent existence, so and so. Neg uh, negate any opposites on the linguistic level, yet when their reference appear to the mind, they do so in the aspect of eliminating conceptual elaboration, such as term or therefore term of the negation. Negation is for two kinds of the true, the non implicitic non implicated negation do not simply or affirm of other fact following the explicit elimination of the object of negation. That means there's two, two kinds of, you know, two types of negation, two kinds. What are they? Non Implicative negation and implicative negation. Implicative, non implicative negation. The implicative negation, after they negate the something, indirectly they need to, you know, yeah, impel. The non negation, when they realize something, Indirectly, there's not any kind of impulse. Elimination of the object of negation. For example, when asked, now, if somebody asks a question, are Brahmans, Brahmans allowed, allowed to drink alcohol? Then the respond, no, they do not drink alcohol. I mean, somebody asks, right, are Brahman, Brahmans allowed to drink alcohol? And then the answer, the response say, they do not drink alcohol. So when you hear this person do not drink alcohol, I mean your mind just only merely understand, oh, he's not, you know, taking alcohol. It doesn't have any impulse to impulse you. He or she is not taking alcohol, but still drinking coffee, tea, sweet tea, or other cup of soap. Simply they negate the alcohol. They stop the alcohol, that's it. Negation is of two kinds of the two non Implicative negation does not impulse or affirm any other fact following the uh, explicit elimination of object of negation. For example, when asked, are Brahmans allowed to drink alcohol? 
the response, they do not drink alcohol. It's a simple rejection of the drinking alcohol. Just, just reject, simply they reject the drinking alcohol, not establish, not impulse, or you know, he or she is uh, drinking coffee. Do not drink alcohol is simply a rejection of the drinking alcohol. The statements, the statement does not affirm in any way that they, they, they do or don't drink other beverage. Right? Simply they eliminate simple rejection of drinking alcohol. The statement does not affirm in any way they do not or do not they do or do not drink other beverage. Conversely, any any implicit negation impulse or less meaning is an impulse or affirms other fact following the mind mind's emulation of the object of negation. For example, this after they negate the negation, there, there's something impulse in your mind. It just lets you, I think, you know, re, uh, realize. An implicative negation impulse or affirms other fact allowing the minds elimination of object of negation. For example, when wishing to uh, demonstrate that one of the two individual belongs to the, the common ones, the commoners cast, uh, cast, you want under the statement, he is not a Brahma. This does not merely negate the person being a Brahma, while the negative statement is also affirm that the person belongs to a case other than the just the Brahma, mainly the uh, common, commoners case. There, so this means there's a, just at the beginning, there's a two terms of uh, two forms of negation. What are they? Non-implicative neg implicative negation and implicative negation. Non-implicative negation and impl implicative negations. Within the implicative negations, there are three types. There are three ways, such as other fact, may be impelled. Impel, how do I impel? By negative statement through direct Im implication. Indirect implication and context constructual implications. What are the three ways? Uh, such as other fact may be impulse by negative statement through the direct implication, indirect implication, then contextual implication, direct, indirect, and uh, contextual implication. So what are the uh, things can directly impulse? There are three ways such as other fact may be impelled, implied by the negat negative state through direct implication, indirect implication. Then, then the last one is contextual implication. First is like the statement, no self exists. Simple as no self exists. Just negate the, you know, Sebi existent, no sub exist. No sub exists, whereby the elimination of the object of negation and end 
affirmation of the other effect are both effect with the single declaration. The second is like the statement, you know, stut dharma datra, dharma datta, do not eat during the day. Just simple, don't do not drink during the day. Do not eat and drink during the day. Tell me this other fake or uh, the both. Sorry, the second is like the statement, you know. The stut dharma data, dharma data does not eat during the day. That's a, you know, the fatty person not drink and eat during the day. That means it's impulse eating during the night time, eating the night time during the night time. Where another fact is imposed indirectly, the two representatively give you know, a specific ex explanation of the impelling, impelling other fact directly or indirectly. An example where a fact is impelled, impelled both directly and indirectly is statement, Dharma Dada who does not eat during the day is not skinny. Now they add the, the words with the skinny. He, he doesn't, you know, he don't, he didn't drink during the day. During the day is not skinny. The third term is like uh, the statement, he is not Brahma. When studied in the context where there's not yet been determine whether the person is of the royal or the Brahma. Kester. Here the statement which is case he is, he is not explained explicitly met a text cited now there's a kind of you know quotations. For you it is not enough not just enough to read you know all the line Read the line that think about, think about. Therefore, the emptiness, ultimate truth, you know, the truth nature, all of them be are the non implicative negation. Because when, when we realize emptiness, the mind can neg make only negate the negation. It doesn't have any, you know, impulse. Then the mind just holds or focus on empty or only merely empty of any existence, nothing else. If the mind, you know, based on realizing emptiness, all also realize something else, mean you are not really realize that emptiness. So why it is so important? The emptiness must be, you know, uh, non implicative, impl implicative negation. Is as I mentioned that at the beginning, all the negative thoughts, attachment, anger, everything we have we have arise have been arising because we really don't know the actual truth, actual reality of all phenomena. Therefore, we have the problem. So when we realize emptiness of the less emptiness of the cup, before I have a very strong, very excessive, uh, excessive attachment to the cup, because I don't realize the cup. I don't realize the actual, you know, the reality of the cup. Then I have an attachment. Somebody talks, I, I get angry. So when I realize emptiness of the cup, I mean the cup is just empty of inherently existent. I mean in the minds, they just negate the inherently existent and realize only empty of inherently existent. 
it doesn't have any uh, uh, what you call implicative impulse to realize something else. Therefore, when we realize emptiness of a cup, that means it's totally destroyed the basis of arising attachment, basis of the basis, of the base or the base of arising attachment, anger, ego, and so so. It's totally destroyed, you know, uh, the basis, the base, the base to arise the attachment because they realize the actual fact or truth of the cup. Therefore, the, another example I said, somehow you believe there's a ghost, you search every corner of the house, then finally you, you believe, oh, there's no ghost, then you feel so relief. Likewise, when we look at our own attachment errors, anger errors, ego errors, pride errors, right, all of things, when we see the truth, the reality, truth or reality of the phenomena, there's no any basis to arising attachment so and so. Then slowly, there's, you know, all the negative thoughts arise lesser and lesser. One day, they cannot arise anymore. And slowly, gradually, the ignorance also cannot exist in your mind, cannot arise anymore, anymore. Then we name you have you know achieved liberation. You are liberated from all the negative thoughts, particularly ignorance. How to liberate you now? You can see we totally, you know, through realizing emptiness, they totally destroy the base or basis of you know for arising all the negative thoughts. For example, you are watching a movie, the movie was so nice, so good. You are totally indulged in the movie. If somebody switch up the projector, nothing. You can just see the empty of the, you know, what you call the image, all the things. You can just see empty of the image of the wall. Then there's no more attachment, no anger. You feel a bit upset. Then when we realize emptiness, look, we switch off all the anger, attachment, ego, and pride. No more. Cannot. Because there's no any base. There's, this, the, it doesn't have a you know, very tiny basis can cause to arise attachment. Therefore, you know, still you can read slowly and in And read slowly and think more precisely. Then there's a quotation from the Lamb of the Wisdom says, negation that reveals by the implication that which is affirmed by the means of one words, and that which is does not both, but does not express the words itself. There are the implicative negation, other are the different. So this uh, argument is, I think, very profound. According to Gelugpa tradition, Lama Tsongkhapa tradition, we believe emptiness is the non-implicative negation. Then in the Nyingma by Nakayuba, many master believes the emptiness is not the non uh, implicative negation. The implicative negation, not the non implicative negation. There's a I think in, 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 in Tibet, in Tibetan, there are so many debates between different master. Is the emptiness is a, a non implicative negative or implicative negatives? So Lama Tsongkhapa say hundred percent sure. The emptiness is the you know non-implicative negation based on Nagarjuna Tetis and based on the all the Prajana Paramita teaching. Some have said that when a negation term is combined with the terms that is the affirmative, not a non-implicative negation. This is incorrect. Just because the term 
Brahman is affirmative, do not proclaim, must preclude the fact that is the statement. So now let's now from to read all the quotation. Now we go, you know, refuting the four extreme one by one. Okay, now page number 197. So before that, I think we need to read, read few sentence. Not originating from self, namely from his own essence. How can the effect originate from something others? The causes that exist or other through the intrinsic characteristic. He cannot, he does not originate from the both, self and other. How form not cause? It does not. Now where there are things that uh, possesses intrinsic existence, is would internal that they arise by way of one of the four possibility. Within the notion of the intrinsic arising, you know, notion of intrinsic arising, there are only two uh, possibilities from the cause or from no cause. Cause or no cause. So we cannot accept um, you know, arising from no cause. Now, then we, we accept arising from cause. And within the possibility of the arising from the cause, there are only three possibilities arising from itself arising from other or from the combination, I mean both, of the both, self and other. Therefore, these four positions are uh, exo exhaustive, ex ex exclusive, I'm not sure, exhaustive. Now it's become more clear, right? Is thing arising uh, within the, sorry, now, where there are things that possess, possess if they have an intrinsic existence, this would entail that they arise from where one of the four possibility. Within the notion of intrinsic arising, there are only two possibilities from a cause or from, a, from no cause. So we cannot accept no cause. And within the possibility of arising from a cause, there are only three possibility, arising from self, arising from other, or from the combination in both, combination of both self and other. Therefore, these four positions are ex hostive. Now, the logical proof that establish this absence of intrinsic arising through reasonings. Okay, so today, so we can have our class only one hour because since this morning, the monastery already start the yearly examination. Morning, I skip one hour, so half hour, uh, 7.30 to at 30, then I attend the exam for, from the 8.30. So also when you hear the, the ring or the, the, the gun sound mean, there's an exam, I need to go alone. So morning, afternoon, I don't have to be there all the time, but I have to go. Evening, the examination for uh, memorization, and I have to be there from beginning to end for as a, a weakness. Also, the topic is bit difficult. I think all of you feel tired or boring. I will. See. Can you turn off your camera? Then I can see you feel bored or not. Please turn on your camera, everybody. Okay, I can see CK. CKM is okay. Lencho. 
Okay, quite fresh. Perry is always fresh. <laughs> then Elente is very good. Shelly is very good. Then Odita Otsema show. Uh, oh, Dharma friend who wearing wear the glasses, wearing the pink color shirt. Guilong, her name is Guilong. Me can the how? Jufo also looks uh, fresh. They really like quite okay. <laughs> then Agnes Liu is good. Agnes, they be me. Ni hauma. Huh. Yeah, the Taja model is uh, is uh, looks good. The Stephen Ho quite okay. Then one I can also so clearly why is it is Yang Zon? Oh, oh yeah. Okay, then they so someone don't want to show their face is okay. I can see your name. Okay, so I did stop here. So next Sunday also, I try to have a class, you know, uh, maybe not like a two hours, maybe one and a half, maybe one hour. Okay, so thank you so much for attending the class. So I hope all you could, you're going to remember how I start the class. First, first I explain the important, the points why we need to study in the middle way. Then also I explain the four you know, different view from the four uh, Buddhist philosophy, uh, philosophy. Then how the Chitta uh, between Madhimaka and sorry, Pasangika and Sotantika differences. Then according to from the uh, Pasangika point of view, they cannot accept, you know, uh, inherently existent phenomena. If, you, if something exists inherently, then there must be four principles. One, causeless, arising from causeless, they cannot. Arising from cause, that means arising from itself, arising from other, arising from both. They cannot accept, you know, any of the theories. So next we will start from on the page number 197. Okay, so don't feel Discouragement, just say, I want to study, I want to realize emptiness. I want to cut the root of samsara. I want to achieve liberation of Buddhahood. So, so it's so important when you, are, when you have free time, little bit free time, 10, 15 minutes, open the books, you know, read sentence by sentence. Think deeply how a thing exists. At the same time also, morning, evening, you need to do a lot of prayers, recitation, prostration, to cause to realize emptiness. Because Lama Tsongkhapa was extensively studying, he was studying realizing emptiness for realize emptiness. So he, he feels so difficulties felt. Then he asked Manjushiri, even though he can talk to Manjushiri, he can see Majushiri, still he could not realize emptiness. Then Majushiri said, you will do one important practice, which is you fully believe your guru and idam. Idam and guru is just oneness. And pray to the idam or pray to the guru. Second, you need to accumulate merit to have a lot of positive energy. Third, at the same time, you need to do elimination, eliminate the, all the negative karma, then one day you will realize emptiness. Since, you know, he practiced these three commonly, then very fast and quickly, he realize emptiness. We also can. Don't think I can, I cannot. Never, never think in your life. I cannot. Never think. Even though you cannot, you cannot. You must think I can. You think I, I can. You should not think, never ever, I cannot, I cannot. Particularly Singapore say, oh, cannot, la. it's so difficult, I'm so busy. You should not say, you should not think. Always say, I can. 
why they can or why I cannot, we are same human. Maybe, you know, suddenly I'm better than them, why I cannot. Just encourage, you know, you know, you know um, make a lot of courage in yourself. That one day you're going to realize emptiness. One day you really can, you know, generate actual bodhicitta, not just uh, with the uh, aspiration. Thank you. I enjoy your Sunday. So we do the last sentence for dedication from the yes. This one we all chant together slowly. May the merit of speaking about the excellent tradition of the Master Nagarjuna extend to the edges of the space itself. May such as merit shine bright, bright as, as autumn stars amid the mind sky darkened by afflictions. Affliction. And the thoughts and the thoughts of the force of the having often merit uh, resembling as a shining gem on a serpent's hood. May the entire world rely such as this and swiftly travel to the Sugata grown. May the entire world rely such as this and swiftly travel to the Sugata grown. May the entire world rely such as this and swiftly travel to Sugata's groan. Thank you. Enjoy your Sunday.